Hello! If you've just purchased the Homeworld Remastered Collection, this video will provide new players with a whole host of tips and tricks to help you get over the learning curve as quickly as possible. Having recently spent hours learning the game, this is everything I learned along the way that could be described as a eureka moment which genuinely made the game easier. If you haven't purchased Homeworld yet, please check out my recent video showing you what it's like to actually play the game to help you make an informed decision. Let's get stuck in and start with camera movement. Controlling the camera in 3D space is confusing, but the easiest way is to use the middle mouse button to lock onto a selected unit. And of course, you can use right click to rotate the camera. You can flick between ships very easily this way, select them and right click. You can even go right across the map and use this method to really quickly go from one place to the other. You should really be doing this 90% of the time during Homeworld, and it makes the navigation so much easier. A quick but useful tip, once you've selected a unit, Roger. and either right-clicked or tap M to bring up the movement circle, maybe you've changed your mind and you don't want to give them an order right now. For whatever reason, you're here, and you want to remove this. Simply tap M or click Escape. Both work. I prefer M, but you can use either. Sometimes you just want to cancel it. Tap M and that'll do it. Next up, we have attack moves, a very standard RTS thing. Highlight your units, hold Control, hold A. You'll see the red circle pop up. Then either left click or right click, it doesn't really matter. And you'll see red lines appear to show that they are going to attack move. You can't cancel this with M. M, 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 M will not cancel, but if you want to, escape will. Now, moving up and down in 3D space, that's where the fun really begins. Select a unit or units. Then either M or right click to bring up the movement circle. Once you're on your X and Y axis where you want to be, Hold left click Complete. and then push forwards or push backwards on your mouse to go either up or down. Then once you've found the position using holding the left go up or down or release it to move around a little bit more, once you click, group that's where they'll in. go. Nice and easy. It's also worth mentioning that if you ask units to attack another unit or to simply go to another unit, they will automatically go up or down as required. But if you want them to just go into free space, it's bring up the movement circle with M, then holding down left click to go up or down, and then clicking to select that. Something else you can do is you can ask units to follow each other by clicking on the other units. They'll now follow them. That can be quite useful because 3D space can be a bit of a mind bender to move around in. It can sometimes be difficult to select one group, get them to go somewhere, and then select another group and get them to go to the same place. They might actually end up in quite a different space just because of the 3Dness of the game. So if you're going to select two different groups for whatever reason, and you definitely want them to go to the same place, Simply select the group that are already going there, and the second group will follow them. Nice and easy. Also, in a similar vein, if you tap G, and then click on the other units, these units will now guard these units wherever they go. Very useful for protecting your harvesters, or perhaps providing a fighter escort to your capital ships. Another quick one for you is on your harvesters, these little guys here. Reporting. Tap H, Collection confirmed. and they will automatically harvest the nearest resource. They do sometimes just stop harvesting resources. Once they've exhausted this lot, they'll probably just stop. And so you can click on them all, Copy. tap H, and they'll go to the nearest resource. One of the most important tips I can provide Something I found the most helpful is spacebar. This view here, the sensors manager. 
you can get a far broader view of the area from above or below. It's fully 3D and everything comes up with shapes. So you get fighters as triangles, all that's as little squares, diamonds for the harvesters and so on and so on. Won't take you long to learn them. And you can provide orders just as you could in the normal view. You can do it in the sensors manager view. 3D space movement, attack moves, engaging, everything can be done from here. And obviously it's a much wider view than anything else you can have. And so you'd do well to be in this view for could easily be up to 50% of a game. It is that useful. A quick one on the launch menu in the mothership. It can be quite confusing. This works for carriers as well. You have the stay docked option and the auto launch option. What does that actually mean? Roger. Well, if we ask our guys here, not so much the carrier, we ask these fighters here to go into the, uh, the mothership. And there you go. And immediately they come out. So effectively, auto launch does nothing if you ask ships to dock within the mothership. Let's do the same again, but let us choose stay docked this time. So these guys are going to sort themselves out, queue up very orderly, and they go inside the mothership. But because we have stay docked, they're not going to automatically come out. Instead, we get a little menu here telling us how many are actually inside the mothership. And then from there, we can select one, two, three, all of them, deselect them and decide how many we want to launch and when. This also affects when you build new ships. If you're set to stay docked, they won't come out the ship until you launch them. If they're set to auto launch, they'll just come out as soon as they're ready. This next tip will show you how the salvage corvettes work, which is the most important ship in the original campaign, in my opinion. Select your salvage corvettes and right click on a frigate or destroyer or any large ship and they'll drag it back to your mothership, kicking and screaming, and convert it to your team. But beware that the larger the ship, the more salvage corvettes you'll need. Plus, be careful, because if you send four salvage corvettes against a ship that only requires two, when the first two lock on, the second two will just sit there, have their orders cancelled, and do nothing, and they will probably die. Salvage corvettes are very weak, so they may well get taken out by enemy ships. You will probably have to either isolate a particular ship to get it or distract all of the other ships to stop them shooting down your salvage corvettes because they are on their own very weak. Next up, we have a very straightforward S to stop. Setting drives to idle. Let's say you've given some orders for whatever reason you want to stop. You either gave an order by accident. Maybe you are moving across the screen, but then you run into the enemy fleet and you want everyone to stop. Just press S. Nice and easy. That'll do it. Next up, we have the evasive stance, which you can find in the bottom left of the screen. So these are very useful because, as you can see here, the aggressive will increase damage, but slow down the speed. And then we have evasive to increase damage, decrease speed, and then neutral is a bit boring. So these genuinely affect the speed and the damage of your ships, which can be incredibly useful. Up here we have um, these behave like stances really, um, offensive, defensive, and such as passive. This really just determines how your ship will engage other ships automatically once they come across. Are they just gonna go after everything they see? Are they gonna barely do anything or be a bit boring? And be passive but these ones will actually change the damage and the speed of your ships this can be particularly useful let's say you've got a few ships you're clearly outnumbered you're engaging an enemy fleet what you might do is set them all to evasive they'll survive a lot longer that way they'll survive a surprisingly long time in fact but that might give you enough time to build your fleet that can counter their fleet and get your guys over there, potentially using the evasive because that will be quicker. And then once they arrive, everyone can go on aggressive to increase their damage output. But the key is that these do survive longer if you have evasive on. 
Next up is uh, for the original Homeworld campaign. The Kadeshi fighters are stronger than yours. So when you're in Kadesh and you have all of these Kadeshi fighters absolutely ruining all of your fighters, multi-gun corvettes. I found those levels very, very challenging. And the answer for me was when you can, research and build multi-gun corvettes, lots of them, and you can take out those Kadeshi fighters. It's also very useful to take out these little fuel pods because they literally run out of fuel and become less of an issue. So lots of multi-gun corvettes, take out the fuel pods, that will get you through Kadesh. Waypoints, very useful, which we can do from the census manager here. Tap W, then click, click, click as many times as you like. But when you're done, tap W again, and your ships will follow the waypoint. Nice and easy, very useful. Copy. Stop them doing that. If you have selected a ship, and you want to deselect them for whatever reason, I won't judge you. Left click. Selected something. Ready. You don't want to select it, just left click. That deselect it. Quick and easy. Then finally, what we have in. is how to attack on mass. We have Standing a fleet back. of a few different types of ships, not loads, but enough for this example. We select them all. We have a variety of ships here, platforms, salt frigates, that Strike sort of thing. In. A very quick and easy way of engaging the enemy, select all of your units, hold down control, drag across all the wall, that's a lot of enemy ships, but drag across all of them Strike and release. Your ships will automatically attack. They're pretty good at prioritizing against the ships that they are strong Strike against but they're not that great at focusing fire. It's not how you want to conduct all of your battles, really. You really want to be taking greater advantage of the counter system and to focus fire your ships, but this is a very good way of initiating a fight. And then from there, you can start selecting individual types of fighters, corvettes, etc., and then getting them from there to target Reporting, taking damage the ships that they are strong against. If you've already played the game, please share any tips of your own in the comments below to help new players. These are just those that really helped me get to grips with the game. If you found this video useful, why not leave us a like? And if you enjoy strategy games, feel free to check out my other game reviews, and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.